Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. This is going to be a walkthrough around how to set up Monit, which is a service that monitors other services and restarts them on, on Linux. In this case, I'm going to be using Ubuntu 20. So we're going to walk through how to install that, how to set it up, how to configure it to work with MySQL. And I don't know if this is a larger problem or it's just a problem that I've experienced with MySQL on Ubuntu 20, but there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a trick to getting it to work properly. So we're going to walk through how to fix that. So the first step, as you can see here, is just to verify that you have MySQL running, and then we're going to go ahead and install Monit. We're going to edit the configuration file for Monit. Go down to the section where it mentions the HTTP settings because we're going to turn that on so that we can we can see the uh, status of it from the website. So here we go. We're going to uncomment. So we're going to uncomment the top line to turn it on. We're going to allow localhost. We're going to we're going to uncomment the line that has the admin username and password. Obviously, you're probably going to want to change those, but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. We're going to go ahead and add a line here to allow. So you'll want to know the IP address of your system and any IP addresses that you would want to be allowed to connect to this. In this case, I'm going to go with 192.168.1.1 slash 24, which will allow allow any system on the 192.168.1.124 subnet to connect to it. And then I'm also going to allow, this is 10.0.1.1 slash 2024. So we're going to exit this with control X. And of course we want to save it. We're going to go ahead and run sudo monit hyphen V to check the uh, configuration file. And then, assuming everything's all right, we're going to go ahead and run sudo monit reload. And then we can check the status. Excellent. So it's all up and running. If we go to our website, we try to load the website 10.0.1.2. Admin, we can see that we're all up and running. So let's go back here, and now we're gonna go. We're gonna want to link the configuration for MySQL monitoring from the available configuration. So we're just gonna. I'm just gonna show you those real quick. So they're stored in etc monit conf available. So there's all these configurations that come out of the box. We're gonna want to move. Uh, create a, a link, a static link between that, the MySQL entry in that folder with etc monit conf enabled MySQL. Uh, there are lots of other ways that you can do this, but this is probably the best way. Let's go, ha let's have a quick look at that before we reload the service though. So here we go. You can see that it is monitoring it using this PID file. Which is the bit that doesn't work for it, doesn't work out of the box on Ubuntu 20, and then there's some other stuff here that determines how it's going to manage the service. But this is the thing to keep in mind. I'm going to show you it broken first before I I fix it. So let's reload, and then we'll look at the status. make this a little bit bigger. Now it can take a little while. You'll see this initializing, but let's just let, let that run. Maybe easier to see it here. And what's going to happen is that this will fail because that PID file doesn't exist. So you can see that the PID file that it is looking for just isn't there. So you'll we'll get this where it can't because it can't find the PID file it can't monitor MySQL, and so the way that we fix this 
is by modifying the service file for MySQL, which is in lib system MD, system D, system MySQL so service. And you'll see here that it expects, it actually has a definition for the PID file, which is weird that it doesn't work because it, it should work. So I'm not exactly sure why we don't get the PID file because of that, but the way that you fix it is that you add dash dash PID hyphen file equals this location. All right, so basically we just add a command line argument to the call that starts up MySQL so that it creates this PID file. Exit out again, save it. And then we want to reload uh, system control and then restart MySQL and then we will reload Monet so that it starts over again. And then we can start checking the status. And we should see here that it can now monitor MySQL. And then, you know, when my, if MySQL crashes or whatever, it'll restart it. It took me a little while to figure that out. So hopefully this can save you some time because using having Monet around to monitor the services like MySQL or Apache or Nginx or whatever is very, very handy. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.